in mind it's my first time taking this route and this road and also with this navigation but it just takes me to wherever I need to go simple direct and easy not confusing at all I'm one of those guys that have so many trouble with uh, you know new navigations I only use one single app for that reason and now is a perfect road for me to use the HDA and let's do that so I'm going to hit I have to hit on the cruise and once the cruise is activated it says HDA probably GoPro won't be picking it up but my feet off the gas and I can actually take my hands off the uh, screen with steering wheel like that well, of course it's not safe so I'll have my hands on around the steering wheel so I can grab on it when I need to but even in the tunnel it just drives like this no problem whatsoever this is just amazing so once I get comfortable with this HDA function, like I keep on using it because it's just so useful. I mean, look at this. I don't have to care about the brakes and the gas. Well, I mean, I'll keep my hands and the foot, you know, close by. But look, let me show you this on a corner like this. And look, as you can see, Korea is not the best country when it comes to the road conditions. It's not the worst either, but so it detects the distance with the car in the front and it will kind of it will slow down automatically like this it's got krell system all around also one on the rear uh, probably a uh, woofer slash cell woofer most likely cell woofer and this uh, owner he actually loves the you know, Bose sound system. He loves that bass uh, when listening to rock and all. But ever since he got Nero and he's been with Krell, he absolutely loves the sound system, he says. Um, aside from Bose's strong bass, he actually prefers uh, everything over Bose. Because Bose provided him with a strong bass, and but that was just about it. So other than that, he says it's much more um, clear, and uh, you know you can hear the vocals more clearly. You can you can get the uh, audio more clear. So there's uh, this nice little hatch for just trunk cover. Nice touch right here. Keeps the car clean and uh, kind of a. Uh, you know, messing things away. And uh, main purpose of this of this is to keep the luggage safe from the direct sun sh sunshade, sunshine or sun shades, and also you know anti theft a little bit. You get something you know important, precious here. Cover it up. Many cars have it, but they don't really come off uh, as a you know, standard, but rather optional. But uh, Nero is provided with this shade. Very nice touch. Trunk compartment. I'm not so sure if he uh, would like me uh, popping it up, but right here is a uh, LED light. A must. A must in the dark. It's the best one tiny li uh, light. Actually, will save your life in the end during the nighttime. So the trunk over here itself is already um, spacious. I mean, depending on your lifestyle, this may not fit fit your everyday need but the takeaway is that what Nero being a uh, SUV type you can fold the second row all the way and then then we're talking about some space on the trunk and also uh, from the shape of this uh, D pillar and also the look on the rear overall because of this design the trunk you know needless to say it provides a humongous space um, try to fit in a uh, golf bag right here. I don't know how many you can fit in. As much as you can stack, that's for sure. With the uh, second row uh, folded all the way. And uh, folding wise, um, unlike luxurious SUV or latest Sorento, um, there's no uh, automated button that will fold the seats. Not, not necessarily because of um, Nero's price, but Nero actually, it's about, it's 
it's due to I believe it's due to a uh, customers for this Nero because uh, they won't be folding the seats in everyday life if they wore um, they would choose a little bit of a bigger SUV over Nero so that being said uh, most of the uh, focus over here as I can see it's it focuses on a uh, versatility this car can be whatever the car that you want this car can turn into a uh, camping car should you decide to go on a uh, quick trip and this can become into uh, a truck like you know looking at the storage on the rear and whatnot and also talking about the mpg the gas mileage on this one is just ridiculous it's amazing pardon me i should say it's amazing and uh, that's probably the best uh, takeaway for this nero but we'll see in a bit and uh well there's no automated close for the trunk and i wish there was but there just isn't so the trunk button is right there and you just close the door like so so just got in it's fully loaded with everything you can get for a uh, Nero so uh, fire up the uh, buttons right there the key fob it's uh, just the latest typical Kia key fob I think well probably I'm wrong but my uh, first time seeing this key was on a uh, Kia Stinger and that was mind-blowing when I first saw it and well it still is it's a uh, sleek personally my uh, my taste so anyhow it's a smart key of course so just leave it here power up that's it that's all it needs it's hybrid you probably you just saw it says uh, ready to ready to uh, roll or something in this car it's just um you automatically uh, drive in eco-friendly uh, mode or driving style should you put it so um i've uh, resetted the car ever since i started uh, driving the, this nero and as you can see over here it tells me my uh, driving style it says 80 uh, percent eco-friendly 14 normal and zero aggressive <laughs> So it's invisible to my eye, but right over here is a uh, infrared light blinking, um, probably uh, being utilized to know uh, whether the driver is in the seat, where I'm looking, and etc. I'm in the driver's seat of Nero, and I turned on the engine, but of course it's not making any rattle noise, the gasoline slash diesel engine noise. I mean, of course it's got the gasoline engine up in the front but you don't need that working when you uh, first fire up a hybrid so the car is fully on it's just awaiting uh, my uh, signal to move and I put it in the park kind of a very nice touch and uh, showing me uh, my driving style driving info and uh, this is the accumulated info ever since his uh, last oil change and he kept it in here and 60 hours of driving approximately and that's 18.3 kilometers per liter altogether mixed fuel mpg city and highway and this i resetted ever since i got the car and uh, i did not care much about putting pulling out the best mpg record but it's tw 21 Point three kilometers per, per liter I'll put the uh, calculation in the subtitle but conversion I'll put the conversion on a screen but that is a ridiculous amount of uh, mpg honestly I've never gotten that kind of mpg before in my life uh, just the um, well following through a uh, typical buttons and operational system 
nothing is a touch based everything is physical key but honestly i like physical keys much better i'm far less likely to be broken or to be confused in the errors and whatnot not that not that the those uh, touch buttons you know create any kind of a problem but of course from this type of conventional physical buttons these are far more durable compared to those uh, touch screens and again don't forget the car is on engine is on so it's put on the park p p r n d and uh, one thing that the owner pointed out is i don't know if you guys seen it but there is a paddle shifter on a hybrid and this paddle shifter functions as a paddle shifter once you go through the drive and put it on the uh, manual mode or it says on a nice little s right there so let's call it sports mode so you put that on the sports mode then it actually does function as a conventional um, pedal shift that we would think of minus one on the left for you know shift down down shift and uh, the plus one on the right for up shift so that's how it is but there's another hidden feature well not hidden there's another primary feature for this which is i'll show you right now so i'm putting that i'm touching that let's do it so i'll put that on the drive and once the drive is on you see did you just notice what popped up that nice little level one right there level two level three and uh two one and nothing or auto so what it does is that that's that's a must on a hybrids and a full ev cars so that's what it does i got to drive around for a good amount of time and i was I, i've been driving around both in the city and a highway the level three regenerative brake was about two times stronger than my engine brake on a nissan 370z so let off the gas of my car you know i have that engine brake engaging automatically but level three i mean it's far stronger than two times of my engine brake i would say 2.5 if not three times stronger so from time to time i kind of felt that i don't even need to brake i mean you know yeah a car behind me won't see any light coming up so he probably um he's he's going he's going going to hate he she is going to hate me for that but i could really save you know brake and brake pads just by letting off of the uh, gas and uh you know let the regenerative brake do all the work but another thing that i've noticed is that that regenerative brake even though I was on the same level, it kind of uh, gave me a different strength in terms of a uh, feedback when I was driving, when I was doing the same thing on a freeway. So on a free freeway, I was driving at about 60 to 70 uh, miles per hour. That's about a, a bit over hundred kilometers. I let off the gas, just like what I did, what I've been doing on a city. And I did not feel that much of a resistance compared to that of the uh what i felt on the city but i was looking at the gauge cluster and it told, shows me i'll be showing you in a bit it shows me um how much the car is charging the battery using that regenerative brakes and it was on a full max level so probably um you know the faster you're going with the momentum and also you know all that velocity i don't want to pull out all the phys physics on here but probably that's got to do something with it i'll look into it and see if that's the case another thing that i've uh that i am noticing inside the car is that it's missing one big feature in terms of uh, interior design and that would be an ambient light simply put nero does not come with ambient light i mean that's not a must but you see that every day here and there and one more thing that i've noticed is that Everybody carries a um, smartphone today, of course, and there are great needs for people to have a, uh, you know, particular mount 
for their smartphones. There are various types of smartphone mounts, but one mount that I always carry around when I get a press car or you know test drive car, etc., is one that sticks inside of the um, blades. As you can see over here, Nero's is really, really narrow. And there's only one single plastic piece right here that I could try to fit in, but I, could, I can't even stick my uh, pinky finger inside. So that's how tiny it is. I mean, I did try out the heaters and the AC, but it, uh, that works fine. That just works fine. With this a fully automated system, it works great. It keeps me warm, it keeps me cool, but that cell phone, smartphone mount is nowhere to be attached unless you decide to 3M tape your uh, mount somewhere here or maybe on the dashboard. The dashboard is very nice, you know, horizontal. It gives you a very good view outside and whatnot. So that's uh, one little bar that I found. So for that reason, I was forced to use the navigation. And the reason why I bring that such mounts everywhere I go is that I am used to my cell phone. So I use my cell phone to, um, you know, as a navigation because um, the software or the AI, depending on the navigation you use, some vary by a lot. So I have, I don't know if it's just me, but I had a lot of experience miss, missing the exits, making wrong turns, and I wasted so much time on the road just because I've been jumping around navigation systems. So because of that reason, um, I use the uh, I carry um, around my smartphone and use on a you know varying cars. But again, going back to this story, because I could not find any place to mount my cell phone, I was forced to use the uh, onboard navigation system of this Kia's uh, UVO. And guess what? It just works great. The um, car wash that I was at is called uh, Wash Planet. And see how responsive this um, navigation is. And just like that, I put in the wash and then it pops up the Wash Planet. And uh, I've converted this into English, of course, because I wanted to show it to you guys. But I, this um, navigation and this map is very on point. So just think of wherever you're trying to go, type that, type that in, it will pop up right away. So typing in the Han River Park right here. So that's Hangang in Korean. It really, really pulls up destination of your, you know, the destination that you have in mind. So, um, I've been driving around the car. Um, yeah, full LED gauge clusters, uh, beautiful, nice navigation, big enough. That's probably, I don't know, 12 inch ish. It's not the biggest one that we see in the market today, but it's uh, certainly big enough. And this UVO gets, um, updated constantly and this car is equipped with the UVO as I've guess what it has a, a data service so the owner of this car is actually getting an alert or alarm every time I open up a door <laughs> so he just told me that he tells he knows that every time I open up a door you know this car will send alerts to his cell phone that it's been done and some buttons, memory seats, 12 way ish heater change right here, and many, many features and buttons of the lane, lane keeping, lane alar alerts. So, this is just a typical conventional Kia steering wheel where you can control most of the phone related um, buttons. And this is mostly for the HDA. The automated self-driving for Hyundai and Kia and I it was my first time trying and it's uh, just amazing so you turn on the uh, cruise so that cruise mode pop up immediately and that over here will turn it. and once it does it will keep the car on the lane automatically and you probably most of the viewers right now probably know or even have experience with those 
So this HDA has been a, a great companion on the road. Um, of course, I have to keep my eyes on the road and you know be cautious and be on the lookout for anything. But this this aided a lot in terms of driving. And if you're driving not for the pleasure, but to get to a point A to B, this system is a must it's mind-blowing and it's amazing and guess what this is actually not the highest level of the hda because the highest one is only exclusive to the gv80 but even with this this is quite useful and it did not scare me in any way when it was um, self-stopping you know a car caught under a red light in front of me so this over here actually provides a wireless charging but i found one dumber um that is i have a galaxy s20 uh, and it's uh, ultra so it's the biggest one but look at this it kind of gets stuck so you see it's picking up that there is a smartphone so it's trying to wireless wire, wireless charge but because it's not close enough you know because it's my phone is just too big and it won't fit there just like that and just just keep on looking what it's doing so that's what happened so other than except except for my cell phone instead i put on my uh, galaxy buds right here and then i uh wireless charged it of course it's amazing feature but i think it would have been a little better if they have um foreseen the market trend of the smartphones and made uh, maybe this you know inner trim or uh, maybe uh, they could have uh, engraved here or they they could have uh, dug a little bit over here you know provide a little bit more or more of an extra space uh, one an inch is more than enough to probably keep up to most of the smartphone phones that are down the way so i mean Anyhow, that's been the case. I could not fit my smartphone there, so I could not wireless charge. Most of the uh, conventional Galaxy and iPhones will fit there, no problem. I don't know about 11 Pro though, because, uh, well, my phone is a little taller than 11 Pro. So enough of smartphone things, so, so that was just that. And other than that, it's just the um, typical things. On the rear seat, I did manage to have my butt in there and it's just comfortable. What you would expect from a typical second row. So overall, this car is very, very comfortable and efficient and environment friendly, eco friendly, eco hybrid. Um, I mean, the more I drive, the more I want a car like this. I have a feeling that it's also because it's Nero, not necessarily because it's hybrid. Probably hybrid sedans or Prius would definitely feel, you know, feel and drive different. So this car is actually bigger than what it looks like. A lot of people think that it's a small car, but it's not it's it definitely is SUV and I actually did ask the owner that you know do you see this as a little bumped up sedan or you know a, a little bit of a, a smaller SUV and he told me that this definitely is an SUV because of the feature of folding you know foldable seats on the second row because of that it definitely you know it's more like SUV